on to your next section. All right. So uh, on to section three, right? Uh, NERC SIP and NIST cybersecurity. This is probably what everybody wants to know most about because this, this is really where the rubber meets the road. Um, and what we, you know, what we have uh, is uh, uh, NERC SIP are the requirements that uh, grid organizations um, uh, must adhere to for cybersecurity. And yet we have a lot of discussion uh, about the NIST cybersecurity framework. And we've created this risk profile, right? We're doing risk management strategy work. NERC SIP is doing operational requirements. The question is, where do these meet, right? How do they come together? So what we did uh, in the development of the framework is we created a mapping resource. It's actually uh, uh, available uh, on the NERC website. And I'm gonna describe this resource for you. I'm gonna walk you through how to use it. Uh, and I'll show you where you can access it. So. NERC's critical infrastructure protection standards are the nation's enforceable cybersecurity standards for the power grid, right? FERC author, uh, authorities ensure enforcement and, a com and compliance uh, continues to grow as application areas uh, continue to expand. So, but as this program has evolved to flexibly match industry needs and the pace of change, standards have matured and been introduced uh, in an involving and complex dynamics. So while we talk about NERC SIP v5, right, I think that's the version that we all kind of colloquially refer to as the current version of standards. Um, we talk about it as though it's a single revision of the suite of standards, but it is a bit more complicated than that, right? So here's what I grabbed from the NERC website uh, a few months ago. There are 11 standards that are currently subject to enforcement. Five additional standards will eventually uh, be enforced uh, and only three of them are in version five, right? There's a lot of different versions out there. So while we talk about NERC SIP v5, what we're really talking about are the most current version of uh, uh, NERC standards. Uh, and there are a lot of folks uh, out there who really wanna see a, a better linkage between uh, NIST's cybersecurity risk management strategies and the requirements in these individual standards. As a matter of fact, uh, GAO in a report released in 2019 made the, uh, the following you know, recommendations to FERC. It is consider adopting changes to its approved cybersecurity standards to more fully address the NIST cybersecurity framework. Now, the challenge with that is that if we don't clearly understand how the NIST cybersecurity framework relates to the NERC SIP standards, which are the requirements that FERC uh, uh, uses and enforces, then you know, how do we understand even where to begin on, on um, uh, an instruction or a guide like that? So uh, in July, 2020, NERC and NIST released uh, an updated mapping between uh, SIP and the cybersecurity framework. CSF is short for cybersecurity framework. That's the NIST thing. We're on version 1.1. Uh, we're going to call again, SIP v5 is shorthand for all of the most current standards. Um, it's available for everybody. It's on NERC's one-stop shop uh, webpage. It's free to download. You can, uh, uh, I have the web link up there, but if you, if you just Google NERC one-stop shop uh, compliance monitoring, uh, you, can, you can find it and you'll see that arrow down at the bottom. That's how you get to the NIST tool under the compliance uh, heading. Okay, so here's the mapping tool. Right now, I know I, I get it, the font is too small to see, and uh, I, I know that Zoom um, isn't sending this in, in adequate resolution for you to read, but that's okay because I'm going to walk you through it. So the first thing uh, with this yellow arrow up there is that it's searchable, right? So if you have something specific that you're looking for, you can do that uh, and it will pull it up for you. The, the second thing is that when you download the spreadsheet, it's organized right along the NIST cybersecurity framework core. So identify access management physical devices, which is IDAM-1, which we talked about before. That is the first row here. It's just like we're looking at it in the risk profile. So it makes it a little bit easier to understand, right? Then, of course, we identify the NERC SIP standard that relates to this subcategory. And, and so here is our mapping, right? Uh, you can see um, uh, that IDAM-1 maps to SIP 002-5.1A-R1, right? So at least you have that mapping. 
And then we have the remaining columns that include the NERC SIP wording, the mapping logic based on key information within the standard, and even a guidance column for ensuring uh, conformance to both the NIST cybersecurity framework and the MAPS NIST standard. So all of this provides a whole lot of information that becomes very useful and consolidates it into one easily uh, uh, usable spot. Um, and so now you can look at the mapping and then get all of this unique information for each relationship between NIST, the NIST framework and NERC SIP. So hopefully this makes things a little bit easier. But the mappings are not one-to-one. -one. Uh, and indeed, in this first example, you can see that there are two different requirements, NERC SIP requirements uh, in their standards, which both relate to this cybersecurity framework subcategory. And so you get all of the unique information based on each relationship. And those relationships are broken down to the requirement level. So in other words, it's a more granular mapping than the standard level, right? And to make things a bit easier and searchable, uh, we duplicate the NIST cybersecurity framework entries in each of these mapping rows. So IDAM-1 is listed twice, and it makes it easy to reference the relationships between the NIST framework and each of the NERC SIP requirements. Okay, so that's a lot. I hope it's helpful. It, it, it gives us that kind of brute force, massive listing of things that we can do. But there's more to this tool than just that kind of brute force listing. And it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you just work with me and we figure out how to use it. So let's go instead of uh, the, the NIST CSF 1.1 to SIP v5 uh, uh, page on the bottom. There's the next one, which reverses this order. So every, um, uh, every SIP requirement is then mapped to the NIST standards. So whether you're beginning from NIST CSF or you're beginning from NERC SIP, you can always begin with that if that's what you're most comfortable with and then use these two pages uh, to get into the other resource. But I think most importantly and most powerful is that third tab on the bottom, the pivot table. So the pivot table is super helpful and it will let you search the mapping tool in many ways, right? But you actually may just want to use it as provided because you can essentially see the inverse of what we just looked at. And it does it through a, a dynamic uh, mapping. Um, where on the front worksheet, the structure was organized by NIST cybersecurity framework functions, categories, and subcategories. You can see that the pivot table comes with the default organization structured around the NERC SIP requirement ID. Right. And so if you click on the cell right there, just you know, pick any cell in the spreadsheet, it'll give you a list of all the related cy uh, cybersecurity subcategories. So I have a little screen, screen grab right here. And you can see that SIP 004-6-R4, the fourth requirement of that standard, um, has you know, more than half a dozen uh, NIST cybersecurity framework subcategories associated with it. And what's really important here is that if you just drag and reorder the rows labels in the pivot table fields GUI, that little thing by the orange box uh, down uh, in the bottom middle, um, you can have the same mapping organized by the NIST cybersecurity framework structure, uh, right? So let's, so this is now organized, sorry, by the NERC SIP structure. So, right, where before we had the screen capture organizing uh, based on NERC SIP uh, and uh, then listing all the relevant uh, uh, CSF subcategories, now on the right, you see all the NIST cybersecurity framework subcategories uh, and then each of the NERC SIP requirements that they map to, right? This is critically important because if your uh, organization uh, finds that it is uh, deficient in either the strategy for managing risk or the requirements for conforming to the standard, you can now understand between these two resources uh, how, they, how they relate and uh, help prioritize your responses. Um, so let's use this and go back with these tools to re-examine the protect access control subcategory six, right? PRAC six. Remember, we found that one particularly interesting. So what we said uh, was that the subcategory in the cybersecurity framework states that identities must be proofed and bound to credentials and asserted interactions. 
Yet the consideration in our smart grid risk profile states that in power systems, the binding proofing and asserting of identities and all interactions may interfere with or delay recovery from large scale destructive events as crews from multiple home organizations converge on a utility system to restore power. And so we had this subcategory as gray, right? But what does the mapping say? So I, I think this is actually quite interesting. While we said that PRAC6 isn't relevant to the four objectives we evaluated in that risk profile, in the mapping tool, we do say that it's relevant to SIP requirement 004-6-R3, right? So isn't that peculiar? And the SIP requirement does sound similar to the PRAC.6 in that it states that the bulk energy system cybersecurity systems must include a process to confirm identity. So it sounds similar but there is a difference. And we note that in the guidance column of the mapping tool, it says, quote, SIP 04-6R3 only covers the proof of identity, does not cover the bound to credentials and asserted in interactions. And so using these tools together, we can understand more about the relationship between cybersecurity best practices and NERC protection requirements. And in most cases, and, and this one in particular, the relationship will be something like a Venn diagram, right? Where we can find some relevant overlap, but that overlap isn't 100%. And I think PRAC6 is a great example of this because part of the best practice described by that subcategory is relevant to the NERC SIP requirement, but not all of it. And there are very specific reasons as we discuss with um, uh, disaster recovery, why that is the case. Okay. So now I hope I've given you the knowledge necessary uh, to take advantage of these resources to better understand cybersecurity requirements, best practices, and strategies. Uh, I, I, I think um, uh, the, these are really useful tools. The mapping tool is a great asset uh, and I encourage everybody to start playing with it. I learned, I, I'm one of the people doing this work and I learned so much every time I dive into the mapping tool. So um, Ashton, may maybe we have time for questions right now? Yeah, Avi, and just to clarify, is this your last section or do you have one more? One more to go. Great, yeah, we do have one question here from the audience. Uh, Matt Dale has raised his hand. Uh, Matt Dale, I'm gonna unmute you and uh, allow you to talk. So you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah, this, uh, this mapping work is great. I've done some of this on my own in the past too, before it was available through, through, um, through NERC. I just have a question for you with um, the, you haven't mentioned it, uh, but like I know that there's another group within NIST that is doing this OLIR project where they have basically a tool where you can do a, a similar thing. You can generate reports to do the comparison um, of, standards in there and i'm just wondering is the work from NERC going to tie in with that other nist project at any point and then also is there a reason why it's absent just clearly at the framework level why uh, at the framework level it just doesn't for the informative references appear is is that an issue with just more frequent updates and, and keeping everything uh, nested more easily by doing it the other way around, like having the, the, the SIP change more often than the framework, or uh, is there any reason there? So I guess that's a few questions there. Um, I'll just uh, listen now, thanks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the, the question about the reference to the uh, framework references. Um, we include, the, the framework was published only a week ago, uh, the final version. And we do include references to this mapping and a discussion and link uh, to it in that document. Um, so for now, uh, the snapshot in time of references within uh, the uh, smart grid interoperability framework certainly does mention this uh, mapping resource and, and link to it. Um, as far as the relationship of the smart grid program efforts to other cybersecurity efforts at NIST, um, uh, NIST uh, in, in, in this instance is quite matrix managed and our cybersecurity efforts uh, in large part reside in the information technology laboratory, uh, which does NIST's cybersecurity work. So all of this is a, is a one NIST approach. Uh, and I, I can't say what future 
uh, activities are going to look like, but I assure you that the folks responsible for mapping um, uh, NIST's cybersecurity framework to other resources are fully aware of uh, this mapping because they did it. So, right. So I guess my question is, what will be the authoritative source going forward since it's in multiple places? I don't know that there's such a thing as an authoritative source because everything is evolving, right? These are okay. living documents. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Anything thanks, else, Abby. Austin? Yeah. And that, thanks, Avi. I just want to let everyone know who has a pending question in the Q&A. We will work with Avi uh, after the presentation offline to try to get your answers questioned. But for sake of time, Avi, I think we can move on to your final section. All right. So, oops, let's see how, let's see if I can get there. <laughs> 